Welcome to the Teachers Need Teachers podcast, where we help new and beginning teachers navigate through those crazy first years of teaching so you can maintain your sanity and personal life. Here's your host, Kim LaPree. Welcome to the Teachers Need Teachers podcast, episode number one. Hey, thanks for coming and hanging out with me today. I definitely appreciate you giving me some of your time. I'm your host, Kim LaPree from TeachersNeedTeachers.com, a coaching and community site for new and beginning teachers who don't want to just survive those first few years, but they actually want to thrive. Today, we are talking all about end of the year surveys. So at the time of this recording, your school year is either about to end or it has ended. And so we're all kind of in a similar place. And I don't know about you, but I find student surveys to be so invaluable for planning my teaching for the next year. And so I, I, I'm going to admit, I've been kind of inconsistent in terms of giving a survey. I know I should do it all the time, but sometimes the end of the year just gets so hectic and so I don't get around to doing it. And this year, luckily, I did do a survey. And so I wanted to share not only the types of questions that I asked, but also the feedback that I received from my students and what I learned from it and what I'm going to do moving forward. So here we go. So I did a survey using Google Forms, and I don't know if you've used that before, but I find it to be one of the best survey programs, <laughs> machines. I like it because not only is it free, you know, if you have a Gmail account or a Google Apps for Education account, um, it turns all of your responses into, um, you can do, turn it into an Excel, well, not Excel, but a Google Sheet which is kind of like an Excel spreadsheet. And you can also turn it into like little bar graphs or pies. So um, you can see it visually or you can read all your responses. And you can also set it to collect students' email addresses if you want to keep track of whether or not a student answered. For this particular survey, I didn't do that because I wanted them to feel safe answering, knowing that it was going to be anonymous. Okay, so so here are the questions that I asked. It says, I know what my teacher's expectations are for me. My teacher has high expectations of me. My teacher creates a positive atmosphere in the classroom. My teacher treats me with respect. My teacher makes sure others respect me. My teacher tells me specifically what I'm doing well. My teacher has a positive attitude toward teaching at my school. My teacher responds appropriately to inappropriate behavior without making the situation worse. My teacher asks my opinion about ideas about the class before those ideas are implemented. My teacher cares about me. I can talk with my teacher about things that are bothering me. My teacher is prepared to teach my class each day. My writing improved this semester. My reading comprehension improved this semester. My grades reflect how much I've learned. I enjoy this class. I feel that I'm better at English language arts this year. I was often confused in this class. And then I had some short answer parts, three questions. What was your favorite part of this class? Name one concept in English that you learned and know really well. What can my teacher do to change or improve this class? So a lot of it was kind of like a scale of like never or somewhat disagree or agree, strongly agree. Let me tell you about some of the responses. Now, overall, I received positive feedback. I'm not going to lie. For the most part, I got a lot of always. So like I know what my teacher's expectations are for me. My teacher treats me with respect. Uh, My teacher creates a positive atmosphere in the classroom. So that really, that made me happy knowing that I do those things, obviously. Some of the questions that kind of surprised me here. So it says, my teacher has high expectations of me. 
And the sometimes, most of the time, and always, those were kind of even, actually. So there wasn't one. I mean, in general, it's saying yes that I do. But I'd like to think that I set fairly high expectations. So that's something that I want to think about. Another question that I'm sort of reflecting on is my teacher tells me specifically what I'm doing well. And I, again, it's mostly positive. I had 18 say sometimes, 42 say most of the time, and 23 say always. And I was a little bit alarmed about that. I'm not going to lie because I didn't really think about the fact that maybe I need to increase how much I tell students what they're doing well. I do give them a lot of feedback during the formative process when we're practicing and I walk around class and I'll give them feedback in real time. But maybe to them, feedback isn't necessarily telling them what they do well, if that makes sense. So they're kind of, I'm wondering if they're seeing that as different or maybe I'm just not explicitly saying what they're doing well. So that's something for me to think about in terms of adding that to how I interact with the students. Another one, and I've been really bad about adopting this, I'm not going to lie. It says, my teacher asks my opinion about ideas about the class before those ideas are implemented. I know that, especially for accelerated students, student choice is huge. And that's something that I'm going to admit to you guys that I struggle with because I'm kind of a control freak. I kind of have an idea of how I want to teach and what I want to teach. And I think that I could afford to give students a little more choice and voice in what we learn, or maybe, you know, letting them choose some texts that pretty much are teaching the same thing and they can pick which one that they want to read and, and write about. I don't know. I'm going to have to think about that more because I had 20 kids say never and 24 students say sometimes. So I I think I might want to work on that one. And then another one was I can talk with my teacher about things that are bothering me. It looks like stares when you're looking at it. Like on some of the other questions, there was like nobody answered never. And on this one, I had 15 say never, 16 sometimes. Most of the time, 26 kids said that. And then 29 for always. So I kind of would like more of the always. Maybe... They just don't feel comfortable talking to me about what bothers them. But again, that's something that I would like to think about. And then we had the questions where they had to rate themselves, such as, you know, my writing improved. My grades reflect how much I've learned. I enjoyed the class. I feel that I'm better at English language arts. Those were fairly positive. So here where I asked my writing improved the semester 30 students strongly agreed, but 49 said somewhat agree. So I don't know if that's where they felt like they didn't grow, if they're just really hard on themselves, because I have such a wide variety of students in terms of their writing. Some students are reading at a third grade level, even though they're in seventh grade. And so it means that they're writing also at a third grade level. I'm going to have to think about that one. Same thing with my reading comprehension improved this year. I kind of have to disagree because when I did the Lexile tests throughout the year, I've seen tremendous growth in pretty much all the students. Here's another one that I had a somewhat agree and strongly agree that were tied. My grades reflect how much I've learned. Now, I use standards-based grading, and I do that so that students' grades, when they look at the grade book, if it says a three on a scale of one to four, then they know where they are in terms of their level of skill on that particular standard. So for example, if we have, I can write a thesis statement and they earned a two, then they know that they're approaching it with my help, but they're not quite doing it independently with mistakes. You know, now that I'm thinking about this, I could probably explain and revisit my grading scale a little more because that one to four, it differs depending on the skill. And maybe I need to be more explicit about what a one, two, a three, and a four look like for that skill. So there's that. And this one, I was often confused in this class. And luckily, I had more kids disagree than somewhat agree. So that made me, that made me happy. All right. So 
What was the favorite part of this class? We had kids saying, reading fun books, my teacher's funny, my friends in class, reading stories. I had someone say, I don't have a favorite part, which is fine. That doesn't bother me at all. And then we had name one English concept that you learned really well. Uh, A lot of students put writing and figurative language, which is awesome. Someone said point of view, which I... I'm really shocked because that one they struggled with a little bit. That was that was really fun for me to read all the different stuff that they wrote. And then finally, what would I change to improve this class? Most of the kids said nothing, but the ones that did answer, they had things like do better seating arrangements. I don't think they understand how difficult it is to create a seating arrangement. And, and you know what I mean, because you want to keep certain people away from each other, it's a lot harder than they think. I, I could literally spend an hour for one class period just kind of debating if I, it's kind of like chess. If I move this student over here, then it creates a ripple effect because now they're closer to this student. You know, maybe I could try to do it more, but it's just so exhausting to do that that I usually only change their seats once every grading period, which is every six weeks. Shockingly, A response here, what I could do to improve. Someone said give out more homework. I don't know. I think they were just messing with me because that kind of (laughs) who wants more homework. All right. Another answer that I found really interesting was take a quiz after every topic. I don't like to give out a lot of quizzes in general. I like to do a lot more in-person formative assessments and checking for understanding. I want to see while they're working I want to see where they're at and I want to catch them before they sort of go down this rabbit hole of doing something incorrectly and I like to clear up misconceptions on the spot. Also, I'm personally not a very good test taker or quiz taker and so I don't like to give them out too much because I know other students, they have test anxiety as well. So I know the students who are really good test takers love to take them. So I'll think about that a little more. I don't know... For those of you that teach English, I kind of feel like a lot of the stuff that I do with writing and reading comprehension and text analysis, I don't know if it really lends itself so much to quizzes other than comprehension questions. And if I'm having a class discussion with them about the text, I don't know how valuable of time it is for me to create a quiz on, you know, just for the sake of comprehension. I'm curious how many of you actually do something like this. Do you create a survey? Do you find it useful? I just think that for me, I know what I like to teach and I know how I teach. You know, I know what I'm going to teach. And in my head, I think I'm doing well. The students seem to enjoy themselves. I see growth in what they're doing. But I think there's a lot to be said about classroom culture and making sure that everyone feels valued, they feel safe. So I'd love to hear your thoughts. I would love it if you could email me at kim at teachersneedteachers.com and let me know what types of surveys you give or the types of questions that you ask if they're different from what I ask. And I'd love to also, on a future episode, share those with my listeners so that they can have some ideas for what they're going to ask on their future surveys. So I want to thank you for listening to the Teachers Need Teachers podcast. I hope you like the show so far. And if you do and you want to check out more information about it, you can go to teachersneedteachers.com forward slash podcast. Also, if you are a newer teacher and you're interested in weekly group coaching and working with me, be sure to check out teachersneedteachers.com. And I would love, love, love it if you guys could go over to your favorite podcast app like Apple Podcast or Google Play or Stitcher. And if you could subscribe to this podcast, if you could rate it, whether or not you like it, but preferably a nice rating. And if you could leave a review, I'd really appreciate it. And it would let me know how I'm doing and how I can move forward and make this better. So have a fabulous day. Thanks for listening to the Teachers Need Teachers podcast. Love this episode? Head over to Apple Podcasts or Google Play to subscribe, rate, and leave a review.